Oh, hi. This week, we're back to market prep vlog time. This is my week leading up to it. There were some other work things that arose. I have also been dealing with a really, really, really bad pain flare. Let's roll it back to Monday and work through the week, and then I will meet you back here and we'll do a little event recap and I'll let you know how I did and the updates I made. The most important thing is the updates that I made. I'm very excited about them. So yeah, let's get to it. It is Monday morning, October 23rd, and I do have a market this Saturday. It's another mill number five one. This one is called Trick or Treat Yourself. Uh, I'm excited about it. I haven't made any new inventory since my last couple markets though. Thing is, I have two Hell's Moving Castle custom orders to get done today. Specifically got a message last night that they need it for Friday, so they requested to update it to like expedited shipping. So I'm gonna do like a priority mail box and send that out to them so that it's like guaranteed to get there by the time they need it. But thankfully, I was cognizant of the fact that like people ordering something like that, it's probably for a costume probably for Halloween. So even though the processing time is two weeks and those don't need to go out sometime in early November, I cut out the different pattern sizes yesterday. I do have to quilt a lot of the fabric together because I have used up all of the other quilted fabric I already had sorted out and I have all the fabric here already. So I'm gonna jump into that this morning, just start hammering through strips and then try to get both of them out today because even though the other person didn't message saying they need it by a specific date, I am anticipating them needing it sometime this week. So I would like to get it out because why not? I have to make them at some point and I'm gonna get it done quicker if I do them both at the same time. So I'm gonna get started on that. And yeah, my, um, I probably can't even see, but I'm wearing my shoulder brace today because I feel like my arm is trying to pull itself out of its socket. I think probably because I was doing my best to rest it for almost two weeks. By the way, I was on a pet sitting job for 10 days and got to relax and I did some painting and stuff like that and carved a lino block but in general was not working my muscles as much as I usually do which was kind of the point was to rest them. Have yet to be diagnosed because it is it seems to be impossible, but um, everyone I have talked to is confident that I have Ehlers-Danlos, which is a connective tissue disorder, which is part of why my body hurts all the time the way it has since I was a teenager. So um, also like my shoulder dislocated itself uh, when I when I was first born right out the gate started having problems with my joints. So uh, yeah, no wonder it hurts all the time. But I have braces and that usually helps. I did take some ibuprofen this morning. I never know, I never know which pain med thing is supposed to help over other things. I feel like for a headache, it's something with acetaminophen in it, but I take that stuff so infrequently that I always have to check. I always have to like Google it slash ask probably my sister who also deals with a lot of chronic pain stuff. I remember having to ask like whoever I was working with at previous jobs when it was more than just Bert in my workspace with me. Uh, just be like, what do I take for this thing going on? Cause it, yeah, thankfully I'm able to tough it out without taking stuff super frequently. Cause I'd be taking pain meds every day if I took it when there was just like something a little going on and I don't want to cause other issues to happen, nor do I want to build a tolerance to it. So I really try to use it sparingly, but I could barely turn my head this morning. So it was necessary. So yeah, busy week ahead. I was hoping to print some fabric so that I could make some self-printed fabric bags for the market I'm doing Saturday, but it takes a week for the ink to cure. So I will at some point this week print some fabric and I'll take you along for the journey. I have a really fun idea that I have been working on for too long and I haven't like executed it yet. So it's time. It's going to be so much fun, but I haven't. Uh, oh, Sorry, I just remembered that there are applications I need to fill out. I have to, that is, that is something I 
cannot let go by the wayside. So I need to fill that out right now while I'm thinking of it. And then I will start on these cardigans. It's like 8.15, just kidding, 8.25 in the morning. Uh, I've been up for a bit resetting my shop, cleaning everything. All of the fabric I'm using is really light colors and I don't want to risk getting like any kind of discoloration on it just from not having a clean workspace. So everything got wiped down. And once I fill out these applications, they're just for more mill number five vendor events down in Lowell, Massachusetts. There's a December oddity market. I did get accepted to the November oddity market. And those are always, in my experience, the most well attended ones. And then any, basically any holiday event uh, is worth doing. I did order some stuff for an outdoor market I'm going to be doing and just to restock a couple supplies I needed. So whenever that comes in, I think hopefully by the end of this week, I can do a little unboxing with y'all. I also ordered a pattern because there's a dress I've been wanting to make for forever because I keep seeing everyone talk about it. You are, If you are in the sewing space at all, you are probably aware of the walkaway dress. So I found a pattern of the reproduction version. I can't imagine it's the original version having only been $10, but I don't usually spend $10 on patterns anyway, so it felt like a bit of a splurge. That should be here, I think, sometime next week, so we may not even touch on it this week, but be proud of me because I, I feel like I treated myself. Yes, it's a work expense, but still, I'm looking forward to using it. Also, I keep looking at my pattern shelf in case you're like, what is off in the distance? That That is what it is. I'm that person that when I'm referring to a location and I'm like inside a room where people clearly can't orient themselves to know what direction I'm pointing is I'll be like, oh yeah, that restaurant over there. Yeah. Anyways, applications, quilting some fabric, cutting out the quilted panels and then the solid colors and then sewing together. I just need to get to the post office. I think they close at five. So I really want to get both of these sent out. One of them will be in a flat rate priority mailbox. The other one will just be in a regular one, but my hope is getting it there before the post office closes today will in fact get it to them in time. Not that I even know what time the second person needs it by, but might as well knock them both out. All right, off I go. I will check in once I get those done. I know I can do it. It does feel daunting diving into it, but like I've done it before and I'll do it again. God damn it. Okay. I filled out three event applications this morning. I did cook and eat some food at some point. I have had multiple little hangout sessions with Bert. It's 341. I have gotten both packages complete and I'm going to run these up to the post office right now. I also have to go to the pharmacy to pick up a pres pre prescription <laughs> for my brain meds. I'm actually kind of surprised I got these finished, both of them, because I had to quilt the initial panels and that takes so much time. These are like twice as much work as the normal cardigans I make. So impressed with myself. I will be picking up some food and doing nothing else work-wise the rest of the day. Not just my shoulder, but like my back is in a, I'm in a lot of pain today. This is uh, one of the worst pain days I've had in a bit. So I'm gonna spend the afternoon slash evening with my heating pad and my Theracane and my cervical pillow and some Taskmaster. I'm probably just going to bed early. I will check in probably some point tomorrow. I think this is the only time sensitive stuff. I'll check my wall calendar before I finish for the day, but I, th I think I think this is it. If there's house chores, or I know I need to do laundry, but that, that ain't happening today. Uh, I'm not even sure I'm gonna like tidy up the shop after the mess I just made because I don't know if I have that kind of juice in the tank. You'll all be proud of me that I'll be tapping out for the rest of the day. I don't feel like I'm slacking off by only putting in nine hours. <laughs> okay, hi, quick check-in. It is Tuesday. It's like quarter five and today's, today's been a rough day. Pain-wise, it's been wild. Thinking that because I rested, like actively made a point to rest my body and then the night I came back, I had to move a lot of heavy stuff around that I was not supposed to have to move around. That was a Thursday night and then Saturday was an event where I was hauling beer around all day and that's something I do regularly because it had been a long stretch since I'd like used everything plus 
rushing through those orders yesterday. I kind of went from zero to 60 and um, I think that's why this is particularly bad. I did almost pass out because the pain was so bad last night. I wasn't sure if I was going to throw up or black out, which is not a foreign feeling to me, but certainly not a fun one. Definitely that like health meter flashing, get potion now, panic. <laughs> like when you're underwater in Sonic the Hedgehog and that music starts to speed up, that's kind of how I feel when that is happening to me. I have to laugh about it because I, I have already cried about it today. Just the frustration with like, I feel like I can't even take a break without my body pulling some asinine shit. So I have about 45 minutes until I'm going to a movie night at a friend's house. We've been planning this for weeks and if not for that, I would be staying home tonight. But I really don't want to miss out on this. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that I'm trying to get better at showing up for. Uh, I know I am like in exquisite pain, so I was thinking about just popping on virtually, but I I really just want to go hang out. So I've been waiting to take more ibuprofen, so hopefully it'll kind of like kick the butt of the inflammation I'm dealing with. And uh, I have been stretching a lot and using my PT stuff. I've had this as a support just to like limit my motion here and there. And I have a little bird. He did not mind laying in bed all day today. Not all day, but until about one o'clock. Oh, big yawns. You want to say hi? He's the goodest boy. So yeah, he, he had a good morning and then we hung out on the couch while I finally ate some food because I like couldn't think about getting any down for a lot of the morning. But yeah, frustrating as it may be, life goes on. So I'm just going to do a quick tidy because I didn't do any yesterday. I was going to like take it easy, but I get a vacuum and there's, let, let me show you the carnage. All of this needs to get picked up. I'm just like putting this back and the, the little bits and bobs I used to ship out the packages. So not a ton and I will pace myself, but I would like to do it so that it's reset for tomorrow. I really like to print some fabric tomorrow. Time to tidy and then time for pain meds and then time for friendship. We're watching over the garden wall, which we do every year and there are friends I basically only see when we do this. So excited to see them as well as the, the friends hosting. I think there's new friends I'm gonna be meeting. It should be a good time. And I, I will let myself tap out early if I'm like not feeling up to it, but I feel like I can at least go for a couple hours. And then if I can't make it through the whole show, the, the friends that are hosting have known me long enough <laughs> that they, they know uh, sometimes my body is not super cooperative. So um, yeah, off I go. I'll check in once I'm doing something fun and not just whinging about my body being hurty. Okay, hi, today is Wednesday and it's like 10.30 in the morning. I have therapy shortly. Pain is more manageable today. I am gonna do some work this afternoon once I come back, but I'm not gonna like do anything extreme. I take it easy, but I do still need to like work my arms a bit. And then I promise I won't push it late or anything. I'll just put in like a half day today. And I think what I'm gonna do is pick out some fabric to print. I am getting overwhelmed at the thought of it, right? Cause I wanna do a video on printing the fabric, but I'm trying to stop myself doing the like all or nothing thinking where just because I want to print some fabric doesn't mean this is the only time I'll be printing fabric. I have to do everything this afternoon or it's never going to get done kind of thing. So like the video project doesn't have to be today. I can just print some of the stuff that I have and share it with y'all. I will just be picking out fabrics that spark joy for me. And honestly, I don't know how many sling bags I can get made for this weekend. Oh, and the ones I'm printing, I can't have this weekend anyway. So I'm going to pick a couple, at least one. I'm staring at one that I want to print with my new Mothman lino block very badly. I did send out postcards I made with the lino block print for Mailtime Perk folks. So I hope you liked it because I'm really, really proud of that design. And I just colored in his eyes. So that's the only way I got the two-tone. I know there are plenty of ways to go about making multicolored lino block prints, but 
it's it seemed like an easy route to go but yeah definitely want to make a bag with that for some future events I have coming up and I have all the pieces cut out for a red bag so I think printing it with black ink his little red eyes will peek through and the rest of it will be red and I think that'll that'll suit it really well and I have the rest of the pieces for that other than the handle pieces like the strap pieces already cut out so I think that would be a good use of that fabric and then I have all the freshly organized things that I can sort through and it'll make my life a lot easier. So I'll pick out some specialty fabric out of the specialty fabric bin to pick out the like outer main panels and then I can dig through the big tucker tote. Does anybody else call them that? I don't know why I call them that. I, I always called them that when I was a kid, but like the big, like the plastic storage totes those things, the bins, <laughs> the big plastic bins that you put a bunch of shit in to shove in the back of your closet. That bin that I filled with all of those fat quarters and, and batiks and everything, definitely gonna work through that. And I have so much vinyl I can use now cause I splurged and got a whole bolt and I have a whole bolt of fusible fleece to use. So these are gonna go smoothly. I don't have to like improvise with other stuff where it, it is good to use up the random shit I have around the shop. It certainly makes the process go a lot faster when I just have the ideal supplies at hand. Also, you'll be proud of me. I am wearing a shirt I made and I've had on my garment rack for sale for months, probably since like February maybe. And not that I don't think it will sell. This one definitely doesn't pique as much interest as some of the others. I, ha I have a little bird on my lap, so if you're hearing weird smackerins, that's uh, that's him. This is the shirt. I like it a lot. It's very comfy. Like, this is such nice fabric, and this isn't itchy or anything. It's not s super see-through either. <laughs> I didn't have a ton of this, and especially when my hair is faded and more on the green side, I like this combination that's happening with my glasses and the top. Okay, hello. It is... Thursday night. The clip got cut off because my camera died yesterday, but I was just excited to wear something that I hadn't specifically set aside for myself and then was like, you know what? I deserve this. God damn it. Uh, I did also put together some of the scrap panels of the blue and pink checker or argyle, I suppose, and piece it together into big enough pieces I could make a small Howl's Moving Castle cardigan. This has like glittery fabric on the inside. I like it a lot because it, it looks like calcifer because it's like fire colors. I don't know. I'm really pleased with this. Speaking of Howl's Moving Castle cardigans, remember when I spent almost my whole day working on some Howl's Moving Castle cardigans? One in particular that someone needed by Wednesday, which was yesterday. So between them ordering it and me sending it out is less than 24 hours. And then between me making it and it getting to them was like 36 hours. So like an absurd turnaround time. They're in Florida. It had to ship like the entire length of the East Coast to get to where it was going. And um, I completely understand that like sizing's a nightmare across the board. So what I ended up doing is taking the sizing chart from the pattern and entering that in in whatever order. So it goes from like extra, extra small to like five XL, but in straight sizing, I know that's part of the problem with like certain pattern companies is they don't go up to like plus size sizing. The thing I did is I put as much information as I could. I cross-referenced a lot of other sizing charts to be like, what do you call an 18 versus a 10 and stuff like that. And try to get the number and the letter sizes next to it. But because sizing charts are a nightmare, no matter where you go, I made a point to put bust, waist, and hip measurements into the chart. So like whatever you pick size-wise, whether it's a number or the letter size, you, ha you are selecting a set of like inch measurements. Things do fit different. Like a men's double XL is gonna be different from a women's double XL by like at least two sizes, but like the proportions are different. And I tried to explain to this person, we're like, if you order a custom garment from me and there's any question, what, like if your measurements don't measure the same as the actual numbers on the chart that I have, please, please, I encourage you to send me your actual number measurements and like 
if you're worried about the sleeves not being long enough, please send me your sleeve length. So from like end of your shoulder down. I actually think sleeve lengths are measured from the center of your neck down but we can specify those things. And then like from the nape of your neck to where you want the bottom of the hem to be, stuff like that, like I can customize things. So after all that, there's a lot of back and forth and I don't generally accept returns in my Etsy shop, especially cause it was custom made for this person, but they want to return it. And cause I have to charge a lot for the Howl's Moving Castle cardigans cause quilting the panels together takes hours. And then I'm making the cardigan set like, then I can start cutting the pattern pieces out kind of thing. So it's, it is a lot of work. Like it warrants the cost, but it's still the most expensive item in my shop. So I hate someone being stuck with something that they're not happy with that costs that much. So they are sending it back. They did pay for expedited shipping. So they paid for like rush $25 flat rate shipping, whatever. They are eating that cost. And then I am paying for just like normal first class mail shipping for them to get it back to me. And then once I get it, I will give them a full refund. And um, cause as long as they just tried it on and there's no discrepancy between how it was when I sent it out versus how I'm receiving it, I'll see about putting it back into my inventory. So at worst case scenario, I can sell it at like a discounted rate or whatever, but it is very frustrating because that's been so much of my week and I've had a particularly hard pain week. So like I was fighting through a lot of shit and then I wrecked myself like all of Tuesday from rushing that through. So not that it's that person's fault for all of this. It all ended up being for not. And like, I'm trying not to be super discouraged as far as having custom garments as an option because this is the kind of stuff that made me not do custom orders for a really long time. But that's where I have made the most Etsy sales other than like the sling bags, which I'm trying to get a batch done. I have six picked out. I'm not doing a ton. I'm not doing this massive batch, but I have six different designs set out and I got to cut out the pattern pieces and interface it. And then once that's done, I will go to bed. It's about eight o'clock now. It's 8.20. I did just get some packages from stuff I ordered. Obviously I'm not like, fuck it, Amazon, but there were things I needed. And uh, unfortunately it is a resource that I end up depending on more than I would like. I usually only order from them at most once per quarter, but generally probably less than that. It's like maybe two to three times a year. If you would like to see the things that I got, we'll do a quick unboxing. I should have two packages here, which I, I specifically said like, Hey, just, just send it when it's all already. I don't need this stuff till next week. Bert's been in here all day today. It's made me so happy because he hasn't hung out in here all that much for a while. So I got some collapsible storage bins. These were like $16 for a set of four. I got a pack of cool white fairy lights that I want to add to my display because I have some warm ones that, I, and I only have a couple sets left where this is a, a pack of 12 and I'll be able to use it for my nighttime displays because I'm doing some outdoor nighttime markets. And I feel like those will add some nice zhuzh to whatever I'm working on. Then I think this is the curtain. Yeah, so I got like a set of curtain lights for behind me. Oh, perfect. It has a little like hanging battery pack. That's excellent. So I'm not going to take this apart now because I'm just going to make a giant mess, but I want to um, have that behind me when I do my markets. So I'll make sure to pack a bunch of batteries. Then I've been curious about this for a while, but I got some gold and silver shrink plastic sheets because I paint these kinds of things by hand afterwards, but this would cut out so many steps of me having to put like multiple coats of paint on and then sealing it. I think it's gonna be nice. We'll see how it goes though. I think there's three sheets of each color. I wanted the solid color like rainbow pack with like red and blue and green and orange and yellow. And I think a purple probably, but it didn't come as like a free shipping option. Like once you pay over a certain amount, you get free shipping. Like that stopped being a thing for the solid color 
rainbow ones. So that's that's why I got the metallic ones. I'm more of a silver person than a gold person, but I'm sure I can come up with uses. Uses? Uses for those. And then something I've wanted for a long time, I think it's a two pack, yeah. It's just, it's not a T square. It's probably an L square. Is that what you call this? It's a ruler that will help me do right angles. So it, com it comes up fairly often when I'm doing like little bag patterns and like skirt patterns, stuff like that. And I do really like when it's kind of the grid measurements like this. I don't know. It, it works easier for my eyeballs figuring out the numbers. <gasps> oh yeah. Okay, I forgot about this. Um, I was running low on the jewelry boxes I have and because the charms I'm making for my jewelry are slightly bigger these days, I did need to get a bigger size. And since all of my packaging and branding is teal, oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. Just help during shipping and then that way there's like a nice little extra thing when someone orders at my table too is um if they don't take it in the like plastic packaging with the backing card i put it on then i'll put it in uh, one of these little gift boxes so i'm very excited about this i do have a stamp with my logo on it like the beer glass and the spool of thread so i might stamp these with like a different color or something i'm sure i have an ink pad somewhere i can use or when I do fabric printing, the fabric ink can also print on paper products and this is cardboard, so that should work. More business expenses. Basically, unless it's like medical equipment, I try to only make business purchases on Amazon. I'm not, like I'm not a shopper. Like I don't just buy things for myself. So I think I'm gonna put on a movie or actually I've been rewatching season two of Bridgerton because I'm a trash person and uh, I'll work through that. I keep forgetting there's new Our Flag Means Death and I will get on that. Yeah, I'm excited to work on these new bags. I can show you, actually, I'll wait to show you until they're done. I'll show you tomorrow. That's good incentive to like finish these. I do have to cut, wash, and dye my hair tomorrow. I have to do groceries. There's some cooking I'm gonna have to do, like meal prep stuff. And then my hope is to knock out these and there's a little bit of signage I wanna update. So I would like to get that done and like some tags I wanna make, but those aren't like, super lengthy little mini projects, but I don't like leaving those till last minute. So we'll see how far I get with things. And yeah. All right. Off to cutting this stuff out. I did have a really late start today. So that's why I'm allowing myself to work late tonight. I, oh, right. The other things that happened today is, uh, last night I picked up a last minute Halloween costume thing. Someone needed, they had me sew on Velcro patches to the sleeves of a set of coveralls and they wanted to put a patch on either side. So it was like fairly quick. And then I sewed 25 hats. I put patches on, on 25 different hats and that was kind of a, a rush thing for some friends of mine. Um, but I didn't want to leave it sitting around cause I know it'll help them if they have it. And it stresses me out having that stuff like hanging over me. So I just knocked it out and um, yeah, sent them an invoice. So off I go to cutting out more fabric. I'm excited about this set. And the fact I'm only doing one of each design and I've only put together six, that's reasonable. I'm excited about each and every one. And there aren't any, like I'm not doing duplicates. So I'm not gonna get like bored of doing any of them. I think it's gonna keep it fun. All right, off I go. I'll check in tomorrow. Can you tell? I'm a little tired. I'm not going to push it. If I get sleepy while I'm working on this, I will tap out. I promise. And if I don't get these done, I'm not going to be a dick to myself. It's fine. If I get halfway through doing these, that means I only have halfway to go next week for the next event because I have a whole bunch of events the next two months. It's going to be fine. There will be an opportunity for all of it. Okay. Ugh, it is midday on Friday. It's warm today and it's going to be even warmer tomorrow, like in the 80s which is wild because it's almost the end of October. Um, this is probably flat. I opened it last night and literally took a sip because I started to feel sick last night. I think because I've been dehydrated. So like, please make sure you're getting enough fluids. Water is not enough for me. I do have to have like electrolyte drinks, even orange juice or something helps, but I get a pack of liquid IV or I'll do Gatorade or Gatorlite, something like that. And uh, it, it genuinely makes a very big difference in my 
day-to-day -day existence. Shoulder, back, neck, still kind of fucked. Not as bad, but I also have to haul a bunch of shit around tomorrow. It's gonna be a tough one, but it's, it's part of, it's part of the deal. I have often thought about the fact that like doing pop-up events is not the most accessible thing. When I'm dealing with a really bad pain flare, or even if I'm dealing with really bad cramps or something, or I am, am just having a very low blood pressure day and I'm on the brink of fainting the whole time, it's it's been borderline for me at a handful of events over the years. Obviously I try my best to just do a lot of hydration and self-care leading up to the event so that that doesn't happen. But between pop-up markets and like brewery events that I do, setting up at a farmer's market, you get a tent and haul a bunch of beer around. I like having a physical job like that, but, but there are some days it is harder than others. And uh, yeah, just, just something I've been mulling over for years at this point, but um, I, I don't feel like I hear people talk about it. I don't know. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot for me sometimes, and I'm pretty able-bodied most of the time, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I wonder if that hinders a lot of opportunities for, for folks that might otherwise want to be selling their stuff. When I did a fabric run the other day, I, I got some supplies at Walmart and then, yeah, got one of those like $7 full-length mirrors so I can hang it on my garment rack, but I need to drill holes through it and I need to like assess what size and where to drill said holes because obviously there's not like a lot of room to work with on a tiny cheap flat mirror like that. But I think I'm going to continue my season two of Bridgerton rewatch and knock out as much as I can without pushing it. Um, there is some signage I want to make. I keep forgetting about that, but I did a bunch of meal prepping. I'll have to cook dinner tonight. I have something fancy in mind because I'm not going to be around much this weekend and I'm just excited to see my partner because I, ha I haven't seen him in a couple days. It'll be good. I feel like I'm on top of my shit today. I even bathed myself and washed my hair. I am going to dye my hair. I might leave that till tomorrow morning because then I can like dry it and style it all, all at once. All right, off I go. <sighs> Okay, it is 7, 11? <laughs> uh, I only finished two bags, but these are the ones I came up with and I love them a lot. These are the reversible sling bags. The other four are prepped, but I am calling it now because I have a fancy dinner to make and there's a couple other prep things I have to do. I haven't packed anything and I need to like reorganize my shop. I. I haven't done a test setup for what I want to do tomorrow, but it's a combination of stuff I've been doing, so I feel pretty confident in being able to do the layout. So it should be good. See how it goes. Wish me luck. <sighs> also, pain level is at like a four or five, so 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 much better than it has been for most of the week. I know tomorrow is not gonna help it, but <sighs> it's manageable. So get some Gatorade in me and go cook some sustenance. <laughs> okay, hi, welcome back. Are you hydrated? Also, I just realized how bare this is with just having the one sticker on it, so I need to fix that. It is now the following Monday, the day before Halloween. I have zero things planned for tomorrow. It's 10.37 at the moment. The market yesterday. I I'm really good at getting there three minutes after the time I want to arrive. So it's actually not too bad. I, I did manage to get everything loaded in with one trip other than like one bag and one box I carried once I parked the car. Also, it was hot Saturday. It's been really cold and rainy the past two days, but Saturday was uh, toasty. Not extremely hot, but like I worked up quite a sweat moving anything around. And then that main hallway was also very hot. The event space was fine, but there were some people that got cheaper tables in the hallway and I do not envy them. In colder months, I wouldn't mind doing that. I have had a hallway table before when that was the only place you could set up. They didn't have this event room, but I really like the layout now. As for my table setup, they're very generous in the past handful of markets I've done for them. They have made a point to put me on a corner. You can pay for two tables and they will often put you on an end, but I always mention like 
and I have a small rack. Like I bring my garment rack and if I had it sideways and taking up a whole table space, obviously I'd have to pay for a second table. I leave it up to them if they want to charge me for a second space. I just say need one table and room for my rack. And yeah, I let the people running the market decide. I, I think I've just built up a good rapport with these people from, from, from doing a lot of these events over the years. And even when it changed over to like new event runners and everything, um, I'm really good at applying right away when they open applications. They're usually open for a couple weeks and then I pay my invoice that first day and like respond with what my preferred load-in time is, what amount of space I'll need. Uh, so that certainly doesn't hurt and they're, they're just really nice folks. Everyone that's ever been there has been like, just wants everyone to do well. It wasn't the busiest market I've done there. It definitely had lulls, but there weren't chunks of time where like nobody was around for too long, but people kind of like trickled in here and there. And it was trick or treat in downtown Lowell. That's the town that this market happens in. So there were a lot of people that brought their kids with their costumes and little trick or treat buckets. So I actually had a little bowl of candy, mostly so I didn't just eat it all myself. Um, it was, it was helpful to share some of that <laughs> with a lot of Wednesday Adamses, which reminds me, I have gone as a group costume situation in, in my school days and we, we did an Adam's family thing. I think there were two different nights we did trick or treating. Cause like I lived in a shitty part of a shitty city, small, but fairly unsafe in a lot of areas. My, my specific street at a certain age was not bad, but I absolutely understand why they did it from noon to four on a Sunday because you were in broad daylight. It just felt safer. And then there were smaller, quieter, more rural towns that did trick-or-treating on Halloween night. My friends and I would get to do two rounds of it and it was always really cool, especially, you know, going to the rich towns, they're gonna have a lot of candy and like some of them have full-on haunted houses set up on their front lawns. And I feel like these days people are only more into Halloween every year and it makes me really happy. Like there's way more Halloween decorations in my neighborhood than I've ever seen before and the light displays that are happening, it's, it's becoming as big of a deal as big Christmas light displays. Like there are people that will put together roots for driving your car around to see the best Halloween decorations, which is, I don't know if this happens everywhere, but it's, it's a very New Hampshire thing to like go for a car ride on Christmas Eve or like leading up to Christmas with just a bunch of people in the car, get some hot chocolate or something, have some tunes going on the radio. A lot of light displays these days sync up to a radio station. So the lights are moving along with the songs. I, I love it. I love that people go out for something that's like just for fun. It's just a fun thing. But anyway, the fact that like I saw conversations about that for Halloween decorations this year made me very, very happy because I like it a lot. Anyways, back to the task at hand. Didn't do a mock-up for this table setup, but I basically combined two different versions I've done before and I really like how it came together. I think there's one more change I'm gonna make for the next market I'm doing there in a couple weeks because like I am learning outdoor setup is gonna be much different than indoor setup and I do like when my setup inside looks like a little market stall like there's a little window and you know that's where you can come see me like it's a little shop front kind of thing where when I have a 10 by 10 outdoor tent space I don't need to be behind my table I can be next to it I have like a separate transaction space and also everything needs to be shorter because there's a tent and I've never been happy with my tent setup I, I haven't done a ton of outdoor markets I'm doing a handful of them in the next month or two and I, I really want a good setup. So the other thing I wanted to test out if I had time at the market on Saturday was some fairy lights. I didn't know how long it was going to take to like add them to my display but because it was plenty sunny out like they weren't super impactful but I was also backlit by the windows so it was nice having like a pop color on the front side because everything was that little bit darker. It wasn't actively getting the sunlight, just everything around my display was bright. So I do think it was helpful. I also wish I had my backdrop, but I don't think there would have been room for it behind me 
so it so it's fine. I, what I need to get is those like flat footed tripod stands rather than the like three legs. I guess they wouldn't be tripods then, huh? But you you get what I mean. Like you are taking up a lot of floor space because of the legs having to spread out on this thing. All right, I'm gonna stop talking about things before I make even weirder sentences. But I, I do wish I had had time and like have the space for my backdrop. Cert certain times I can there, but other times it's just not really practical. But it helps because my setup has a lot of like busy designs and stuff. And that's why I keep everything super neutral as far as the like background pieces. Because I don't want to like overcomplicate what people are trying to look at. I want it to be like easy to figure out. So having a busy background behind everything, when I have these like stands and towers where there's grids that you can see through, not everything has a solid black backing behind it. Certain sections do, but not all. So you can see a lot behind it and it's like hard to tell what you're even looking at sometimes. It's nice when you get to like have control over what is behind your table. So anyways, this is what the table ended up looking like. And I think I added five strings of fairy lights around and it just, it just took a couple minutes to do all of them. I really thought it was gonna be a more time consuming endeavor, but maybe it's the strand length, maybe it's just the route I took with all of the strands, but I think it looked really nice. And I really like the Frankensteining I did between my very first grid cube setup and then combining that with a more open-sided tower situation off to the right. So I, I really like how that came together. And yeah, here's the mirror I was all excited about. I really like having it hanging on the garment rack. I did not sell any garments, but there were a lot of people that ended up spending way more time at my setup because of the mirror, because we are all parakeets and, and like looking at ourselves and it's like a shiny reflective surface. So something I have noticed is the aggressiveness with which people move garments along a garment rack is wild. Certain people, so, like, I don't think I go in with that much ferocity. And if I need to like make space between things, I kind of just like shift a whole bunch of things over at once. But I don't know, it's so funny how some people are like, literally just like slamming it down. And, and I don't know, it it's loud and I try not to laugh every time it happens because I'm like on the other side of the garment rack and I don't want the person to see me like cackling at them, but I don't know. It, it always makes me laugh. It's fine. Like the clothes aren't going to get hurt, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Just weird. Anyways, I definitely need to add size tags. I've, I've been debating about it because I put out a measuring tape and I encourage people to try stuff on in the bathrooms or just in front of the mirror if it's like a pullover kind of thing. Rarely people do and I'm sure part of that is maybe they feel like stuff is overpriced. That's fine. I think I need better signage on the garment rack saying it's all handmade clothing because I don't know that people necessarily understand that. I only have price tags on them and then on the flip side of that it's like a QR code to scan to get to my link tree and then the business name but I don't have size on stuff just to give people a starting off point where like I try on anything from a medium to an extra large once in a while I fit into a small there is a skirt I have that's like a double XL and it barely fits me so I don't know who that's for <laughs> but yeah glad I have the mirror it definitely helped people like hang out by my stand and then it seemed like if there's a group of people somewhere looking at the clothes the rest kind of like came around the rack and then perused the bags that I had so it was effective in that regard. Even if I didn't sell actual garments, it was like a good beacon for people to come over. That was nice. I'm very happy about that. And then on the back side of the mirror, I will say this water bottle needs some stickers and I want to cover the back of the mirror with stickers because it looks like crap otherwise. So I've already added a couple, but here here's a use for my PO box. If any of y'all have stickers for your own business. If you have some you've been saving and need a good home for it and don't want to commit and maybe you have an extra or something, I I would love that. Maybe worth sharing is I, I have a lot of blank wall space behind me now and like even further up there. It could use some other zhuzhing. It could use some flair. It, it had a set of shelves in front of it so like I didn't have access to this wall but I, I would love to add to it. My PO box is always in the description. It's usually like the very last thing, but I'll put it up here if you're interested at all. Just throwing it out there. Again, no pressure, but like 
I have a whole stack of like every piece of mail I've gotten from anybody. The cards and even little little zines you've sent back, which I love. So th there is some little pieces of art in here and I have hung some of it up already. I even keep all of the Amazon gift notes when people send something from there. So also thank you. Though to give credit where credit is due. This is still my favorite note. This is a sticker, but I don't want to disrupt the art happening here. It does say Dear Auntie Jo, you a bitch. Anyways, I feel like there's something else specific. Oh, if you were interested in how I did sales wise, so the table cost was $50 and I had to pay $8 in parking. And then it's like 15 miles away. So whatever that ends up being in gas. I have had a lot of talks with my therapist recently as to what a market needs to be for me to feel like it's successful because basically nothing ever felt like I had done enough. I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago and saying like nothing ever felt like enough. And I don't mean that as far as like, I didn't make enough money or like I didn't get enough praise for my stuff. Not that kind of enough. Like I didn't feel like I was enough. So even if I kicked ass on whatever day, I, I don't, I don't know that any number would have felt acceptable to me before, but we've kind of worked through it. And my current thinking is like, I'm content if I don't lose money on a market. So if I make all those costs back, I know I'm not paying myself for my time if that's happening or the material cost. I am very happy viewing this past market as a success, good, because I made about three times my table back. I think I made, all right, let's check my square. It's funny, there was one person that was going to pay with cash, but then they realized they could pay with a card and then they paid me with card. Total collected was $151. So like just barely more than tripled. $142 in sales and then $151 total collected. So that's $9 total in tips. I so appreciate because the couple people that do end up tipping me, that ends up covering all the transaction fees, which for this totaled $4.43. I made six sales. Let's see. I sold one of the sling bags I made that I showed y'all, the mushroom one. I'm glad I have enough fabric to make another one, especially because I didn't take proper photos of how that came out. It's just the clip that I showed you that I have any documentation of other than a picture of my table set up because it's in the forefront. I sold two keychain bags, which I'm debating making like half of them into the dog bag bags because every time someone sees mine that I have on Bert's leash, I, I gift them to people a lot because they're very useful. Like that's that seems smart, right? So I, th I think I might do that. So that's the one table adjustment I might make for this this coming market this weekend and see how it goes. I sold one of my dumpling pouches, two sets of mystery earrings. I feel like there's one more small thing that's so oh and then uh, some of my jewelry. Someone bought a calcifer necklace and then someone bought both earrings and necklace of the mushroom design I did as well as the broken heart ones I did for the Jean-Pierre Polnareff character from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. A lot of people just think it's a broken heart and it doesn't fit together. And people will like comment on that and be like, Ugh, like, like it's poorly made because it doesn't fit together. But that's part of the character's storyline and why his earrings, they don't complete a full heart because he lost his sister and his heart will never be whole again. But like, it's intentional that they don't fit together. I have a left and right side and could have made it so that they tucked in, but um, it's not what it's based on. So anyway, I don't get sassy about it with people, but there have been a couple like younger kids that have come up and been like, do they fit together? Like best friend necklaces or something. Um, and then they'll comment to their parent and be like, oh, they don't fit together. And then I'll explain like, they're not supposed to. Also, that's a dark bit of context to tell a nine-year-old. So I don't generally give that much. I just say it's based on a character and that's what their earrings look like. And then yeah, I think that covers everything. I kind of forget about my jewelry section sometimes because it's not like the focus. It is part of the like handmade garments and accessories like bags and other adornments. I have scarves and stuff too, but yeah. So I didn't sell a ton of things, but because I'm paying myself more fairly, I still get scolded by people for not charging more for things, but the attitude I've been going at it is how much would I have to make 
to create this again, to do this job again. I think they're fair prices. Like, yes, maybe on the underpriced side, but some people think it's like an exorbitant amount of money for me charging $8 for one of my keychain bags is like an extreme expense. And for the time and materials that goes into it, like so those interfacing key rings and a whole zipper in there, plus the fabric. So like take it down a notch. I even have it set up so it's like, if you buy two, it's only $15. I, I thought that was like a reasonable amount. I'm also not Amazon and that's okay. I'm glad I got at least two sling bags made leading up to the event. I have the other four prepped in front of me. I wanna get those done this week. This week's gonna be a busy one. I have a Friday market and that cuts out a whole day of my week, though I'll, I'll have the whole weekend to just like chill. I might, I might try to go to like markets other friends will be at because I think this is the only weekend I have available to do such a thing, but we'll see how I am feeling Friday night. Because it's also a night market and, uh, oh, I guess that will be happening when this goes up. So I'm at Bicentennial Square in Concord, New Hampshire. I believe till eight o'clock. I think it's like four to eight is when the market is running. I've been designing like a whole light situation and I'm, I'm really happy with it. That's what some of the unboxing was. I did get the other set of bulbs. I opened it right away and tested like to make sure the batteries worked and everything. So sorry, I didn't share that, but you'll see it in the, in the next video. Yeah. Thank you so much to everybody for your response on me throwing it out there to do a video every other week. It sounds like everybody wants me to not break myself. So it is appreciated. I in part work for y'all like, okay, to, to be fair, specifically for everyone over on Patreon. Like I, I do treat doing the videos and obviously making the Patreon mail rewards and custom shit tier perks, sending all that stuff out as like work work. Cause I am literally indebted to you all for the support you give me. So I want to leave it up to you because you're kind of my bosses, <laughs> but I'm glad my physical and mental well-being is important. And the main response was like, y'all don't want me to force something or burn myself out. I do really appreciate the response. I, I wasn't sure. I'm always afraid to ask those things, but we're all on the same boat, just trying to get by. But yeah, on that note, like I said, I'm not at hundred percent today. <laughs> I didn't sleep at all last night. My shoulders are feeling better. It wasn't particularly comfortable trying to sleep last night. So um, just trying to take it easy today, like get stuff done, but not push myself too much. So off I go to take care of some repairs for some folks, jump right back into the next batch of market prep days. <laughs> so I will see you here with another video in two Fridays. So the 17th of November, that is bonker right because it's going out on the third i'm like but it's still october how is that possible time math is hard thank you so much for hanging out i really only needed one but knowing me seems like something i would misplace easily flexible enough meaning i'm likely to break one so having a backup also not the worst thing the carnage hey bert Little Bert, what do you think?